It's time again for The Insider with Chuck Kuala and Scott Jensen, sponsored by the Wisconsin Counties Association and the Tommy G. Thompson Center on Public Leadership. Hi, I'm Scott Jensen, former Assembly Speaker. And I'm Chuck Kuala, former Senate Majority Leader. And we're the insiders. Chuck, let's talk this week a little bit about the presidential election and what it means to us here in Wisconsin. It looks increasingly like uh, this is going to be a Trump versus Biden race. So what does that mean for us here? Well, I, I think that it's it's a rematch of a very tight race. Wisconsin is always tight. So I would say, obviously, another tight race, uh, unless something unusual happens. And I think, unlike most years, I think people are concerned about, could there be a health event for either of these older candidates? Uh, could there be something dramatically different that happens? Of course, Donald Trump is the person who would most likely do something really dramatic. What are the debates going to look like? And how many of them are we going to have? I mean, there are a lot of different questions that come up, but specifically with regard to Wisconsin, I think abortion was a huge issue in the gubernatorial race. I think it will be again. And I think you're going to see more than one abortion ad against Donald Trump for having appointed three, three, count them, Supreme Court justices who made sure that Roe versus Wade was overturned. I think that will probably be the margin of difference in this race. That's not to say that Things like the border couldn't be big. And, and by the way, I think Republicans and Donald Trump may be kind of causing themselves a little bit more problem with the border, using that as an issue. But I do think it'll be a really tight race. I think there'll be, an, as you know, an enormous amount of uh, money spent because we're the most swingy of swing states. And I think that, you know, if you don't get Georgia, if you don't get Nevada, and if you don't get Arizona, then the blue wall has to hold. So there will be an enormous amount of money and time spent in Wisconsin. And by the way, uh, Joe Biden will make it to Wisconsin, unlike Hillary Clinton. I think there are a number of safe predictions in there, that there'll be more than one ad about abortion and that Joe Biden will actually come to Wisconsin. Uh, yeah, all that's going to happen. Uh, everyone's going to come to Wisconsin. An extraordinary sum of money will be spent here, maybe a quarter billion dollars or more on the election in this little old state. They should just send us like, you know, $40 checks and get it over with. Uh but no, um, this state, you know, where two presidential elections in a row have been decided by less than 1%, um, by 30,000 votes or less, um, this has to be the swing in this state in the country. Um, and uh, they'll be here a lot. The, the presidential candidates, their surrogates will be here. The Republicans have a, their national convention here. Um, they already, We already had a debate here in this state. Um, so I think we will be the center of the political universe uh, for much of the rest of this year, and a, and a great deal of money will be spent here. Um, I also think that means that um, that both parties will be looking for ways to take uh, to get a, a little advantage here in Wisconsin to try to tilt the table in their direction or not. You'll see it by who gets a ballot access. I think in the state, you're going to see people trying to play with the rules about voting access um, because that 20 or 30,000 people um, are going to be deciding who the next president of the United States will be. And if there's a third party candidate that draws from the left, um, that could swing the election towards Trump and vice versa. And if there's a third party candidate that is drawing more people from, uh, I would say, the, the Trump side, um, well, uh, that 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 would be an advantage to uh, Biden and company. So there's just going to be lots of games, lots of tactics in the days ahead to try to gain an advantage in a state that is essentially dead even. At the moment, the polls show Trump ahead in Wisconsin, but the election's not today. And there are a lot of ads, including more than one on abortion, that people are going to see between now and November. I think Scott is absolutely right. I, I would agree with almost everything he said there. Let me reemphasize on voting access, uh, ballot access. One thing that has changed in this state, which really could be a, the margin of difference even in the state if it's tight, is that we've had a really conservative Supreme Court that said, oh, uh, drop boxes, which are the most secure thing you could get in many ways, even more secure than, than mailboxes because there are so few of them, that they have not been allowed by this Republican Supreme Court, this conservative Supreme Court in Wisconsin. I think that you're going to see that reverse because it's clear that it, it is really something that's easy to do. 
There are some things with absentee ballots requiring whether you're going to have to have the person, the, the witnesses zip coded. So that's a ridiculous way of knocking out legitimate votes that are being cast by people. I think you're going to see the court decide that those things should, those votes should be counted. I don't know what exactly those numbers are, but I certainly think that it will overall let people know that they're more, their vote is more likely to count and therefore that they will cast it. So I think that that is going to be something that will help significantly. But I, I do think that of all the things that we've mentioned, the, the one thing that of likely things that could happen, you know, I mean, a, a health event for either of the candidates is very unlikely. But the one that could happen that would really make a difference is who are the third party candidates and what kind of numbers do they get? And by the way, don't get too shaken up if you see third party candidates polling at 20 or 25 percent. By the time the election rolls around, ask Ross Perot how that worked out. Ross Perot ran third party nationwide. He was huge. The numbers and then people figured out, well, you know, it's not going to be one of the it's not going to be him. So really, I want to choose one of the two candidates who has a chance of winning. But so, Ron Perot in Wisconsin in 1992, when I was running the Bush re-election campaign, got 17% of the vote in this state and did well in western Wisconsin and actually, I think, helped tilt the race. Uh, and and I think that Bush Scott Clinton. is right. I, th yeah. I think Scott is right. If if there is a third party candidate that that clearly draws more votes from one side or the other, I, I think that could be a big factor. But you know, I'm not seeing the traction yet. It'll be interesting to see what happens. And part of it will be, do they have the resources to really be able to, to make a difference? Uh, you know, and how will those third party candidates hint that? I, I don't think that, uh, what is it, Cornell West, I don't think is going to be a, a huge problem for Joe Biden. But hey, you know, uh, the Green candidate made a difference. Jill Stein made a difference in the Al Gore election in Florida. So third parties, even though they will not win, they can make a difference. And I think Scott's right. That could be a biggie. Yeah, I think a no labels candidate would probably hurt Biden and RFK candidacy could very well hurt Trump. Uh, so this is there's a lot of a lot of things that, to be played here, all to try to tilt a state that is just essentially dead even uh, in one direction or the other. So while the world came to Iowa and New Hampshire for the primaries, they come to Wisconsin for the final results. Uh, we can we'll agree on there. that one, Scott. So we'll see you next time. You've been listening to The Insiders with Chuck Walla and Scott Jensen, sponsored by the Wisconsin Counties Association and the Tommy G. Thompson Center on Public Leadership. <laughs>